three, two, one. Yo, it actually works, let's go! This video is sponsored by World of Warships. More on them later in the video. A few days ago, I was brainstorming with my friend Christian and we came up with a super cool idea to build a Lego warship simulator. Essentially, it'll be a Lego boat that sits in a tank of water and you'll be able to control it like a game using a wheel and a throttle with the trigger on. And the goal of the game will be to shoot down targets that'll sit over here and you'll be able to move the boat side by side while the water rushes past. So the first thing we need to do is build two turbines on this side of the tank to actually push the water. And then the more you push the throttle, the faster the water around the boat will go. So it'll feel like you're actually driving the boat. At least that's the plan. <laughs> So now we have to figure out the best propeller to put inside of this tank that will push the most water. Here we go. That's not bad. It's not great though. Yo, that one's pretty promising, honestly. Hmm. What if we just have one that goes all the way across and it's spun from both sides? Let's try that. All right, here we go. Hey, that's pretty much good. We're gonna lower this a little bit more in the water. You can see it's definitely working the way we want it to. All right, so we're gonna move this down a little bit more. We're actually not gonna use power functions motors. We're gonna control this entire thing with the EV3. So the next step is to actually move this down and make it so it actually fits. Let's do that. This video is sponsored by World of Warships. World of Warships is a super fun team-based sea battle game that you can play on PC. The game features over 400 historical ships that you can command and a bunch of maps that are extremely detailed. One of my favorite things about the game is just how realistic the graphics can actually get. For example, if you're a lousy shot like me and hit water 99% of the time, at least you're still rewarded with a realistically satisfying explosion, even if it's just water. <laughs> But the game's realism doesn't stop there, it's also reflected in the way your projectiles fly, the way you actually control your own warship, and even the way enemy warships explode. There are more than 44 million players on World of Warships in five different classes, including destroyers, battleships, cruisers, aircraft carriers, and even submarines. So if you want a fun, strategic sea battle game to play with your friends, you can download World of Warships using the first link in the description, and if you use the code FIRE when you register, you'll get for free 200 doubloons, 1 million credits, the Tier 5 USS Texas, 20 Restless Fire Camouflage, and 7 days premium account. Huge thanks to World of Warships for sponsoring this video, now let's get back to building that simulator. Alright, so we just got this to work, check this out, we're still working on attaching it, but... It's a lot stronger and it's powered by Mindstorm, so that's awesome. It's also very splashy. So yeah, this is a throttle I've reused from our last video where we built a Lego flight simulator. Essentially what this does is it just turns the gear, which turns this little black gear, which will then turn the motor. And this motor essentially acts as a sensor, which goes to the brain, which then tells this how fast to spin. So if we start this program, you can see as I move the throttle forward, it starts slow, and then it gets faster. I don't want a gear to pop off, hit me in the eye. <laughs> so that'll control the speed of how fast the boat looks like it's going. All right, so we have four of these. This will go somewhere like this at the front of the ship. It'll always be pointing forward, but you can steer the ship to move it so that it'll actually hit. Look, we got four missiles right there. We got one motor. The way we're going to shoot the missiles is using a simple mechanism that rotates with four prongs on it, and that way they can all shoot at different times. Now, you turn the motor and it turns this axle like that. Perfect. All right, first test. Half of it worked. A little less space in between these. Now we'll push the button and... Okay, imagine these are stationary. Ta-da! And then every time we push the button, the motor will just move a little bit every time. So we'll have four different missiles we can launch consecutively. So now we have that mechanism. Looks kind of like trash, but don't worry. We're gonna make it better somehow. The next step is to mount the targets on the tank and build the mechanism that when you hit them, they will reset. So. Okay, so here's the issue we're running into. You can see if I play this program, I have two of these up here and you can see if one of them hits this button, it will bring them back up. So if you hit a target, theoretically it brings it back up. Occasionally though, that doesn't work. And if you fire it, it's not strong enough to knock this back. And even if it does, sometimes it doesn't engage the mechanism, which it should. A better way to do this then would be to remove this whole mechanism that resets it, like, because we just don't need that. 
and then just have a bar with a button. You should just be able to tap them and it'll hit the button, which is my thumb. Maybe it'll make a noise. I don't know. We got to get rid of the system because it's just not working and I don't, I, it's, there's no way it will. <laughs> All right, new mechanism. If this mechanism works, we will hear a distinct noise from the machine. A hey, okay, now let's try it with the actual thing. Oh, it's not strong enough still. Okay, so I finally fixed the issue with these little missile launchers. These ones are improved. Here's our soda can. This is the regular one. And this is the improved one as you can see. So the next step is to build up the bottom of the boat and we're gonna actually build a mechanism that allows you to steer the boat side to side on top of the tank. Hey, what if we use like this rock piece? It's water sealed, that's why. So what if... Hey, no, that actually will work, that's sick. We might just wrap this in a piece of plastic just so that doesn't get wet. Also, don't do this, okay? This is really stupid because I'm putting this halfway underwater and that means the water is going to possibly ruin my motors. You could also get electrocuted from the batteries, so do not do this. All right, here's what we have for pretty much the bottom of the boat. We need this to be far enough forward so that there's space for a gear right here. Let's throw a gear on there. Gap right there, you can see the gear. Now that also gives us a little bit of room. Now let's build up a gear rack. The reason we need this gear rack is because it's going to sit on top of the tank and then the motor we just installed in the boat is going to make it move to one side or the other. Yeah, we've widened the gap so that the boat can kind of steer instead of just go side by side. Perfect. All right, now that we got our boat, all we have to do is connect this gear rack to the sides of this and then the boat will be controlled really simply like that. Wow, that's super satisfying. Except this goes right here like that and now, Spin it this way, it goes that way. Spin it the other way, it goes the other way. Okay, motor control. Let's just, uh... Oh my gosh, guys, this is perfect. It goes back and forth like the perfect motion. Let me show you guys what this looks like. Get out. This is how the warship controls work. If I hit the program here, this will represent the steering wheel and the steering wheel will essentially just be connected to this. So when you turn this, it moves the other motor. And for the longest time, I didn't know how to do this until I found a video by Anton's Mindstorms Hacks where he actually explains pretty much the same concept. So I was able to use some of his code in this program. Here you can see this is what the program actually looks like. You just put the input motor, which is the motor rotation sensor here, and the output reads whatever the input says and mimics it. Huge thanks to him. Link down in the description to his channel because he makes a ton of Mindstorms tutorials and I would not have been able to do this project without him. But this is how it's gonna work and it'll just go side to side. Now we have to build the wheel and the throttle and then we have to fill this up with water and actually test if it works. We are super close to having this thing done. All right guys, after nine hours, we finally finished the Lego Warship Simulator. It looks super cool. You can see we got the steering wheel right here and the throttle right here. It also has a button on it, which will trigger the missiles to launch at these three targets. I'm pretty positive everything works. So here we go. We're gonna start up the program and I'm gonna slowly increase the throttle. We'll see the propellers move. And then now, if we wanna steer the boat side to side and try and hit the targets, we can do that just like this. A that is so cool. Let's see if we can fire our first missile and hit a target. A so close. This is super cool, guys, because we went from ideation to the actual thing, and as you can see, it works. And that's like the coolest part of inventing something. Steer this this way, and let's go for that one. Hey, for some reason it really isn't making a sound. The mechanism isn't working super well for that. That's just because it's a stupid button. So I'll just edit it over. <laughs> It'll work just mm -hmm. the same. The waves are working. Everything looks super cool. The missile launcher is working perfectly. The button for the targets is the only thing that isn't working. So was it worth nine hours to build a Lego warship simulator? 
I'd say it was. I think this is pretty cool. This is something I'd like to keep around because it's just fun. Make sure you check out the link for World of Warships in the description. A huge thanks to everyone who helped me with this project. And if you want to watch our last video, click this one right here because that's when we rebuilt the Lego Ideas Globe into Minecraft. And check out this video right here because that's one YouTube recommends specifically for you. This was so difficult to do. Please subscribe. <laughs>